have any discontinuous data, then you may not use a line graph. Probably a bar graph is a good idea for you. Let's look at some examples of bar graphs. This bar graph summarizes data that was gathered in response to the question, how does lemon ripeness affect acid concentration? So what the person did was they took a lot of lemons and into each lemon they placed a copper rod and a zinc rod. Now did you know that when you place two different kinds of metals inside any acid, anything that's sour, like a lemon, then that actually turns it into a little battery. So you can get a voltage across the battery, just like, you know, you can buy AAA or AA batteries and they have maybe 1.5 volts across them. So you can test how strong this battery is using a voltmeter to tell you what the voltage across those two metal pieces is. So the thinking behind this project is the more concentrated the acid inside the lemon, the higher the voltage that will be produced. So when we detect a high voltage across one of these little lemon batteries, then we deduce there must be a high concentration of acid inside the lemon. And since one of the acids inside the lemon is ascorbic acid, also called vitamin C, then that can tell us if that's a healthy lemon to eat. Or must we rather wait until it's riper or what? Until it's the best time to eat it that it's got the most vitamin C in. Okay, so he was trying to find out when you'll get the most vitamin C from eating a lemon. How does lemon ripeness affect how much vitamin C there is, or we could just say the acid concentration. Now lemons change gradually, of course, from being completely unripe to being so ripe that they're busy decomposing, rotting in the ground. They don't go in spurts, unripe and then suddenly nearly ripe and then suddenly ripe and then suddenly overripe. No, there's a gradual change, of course. So lemon ripeness is in fact a continuous variable. But for simplicity, he represented that continuous variable in four discontinuous categories. Unripe, nearly ripe, ripe and overripe. And so he can't use a line graph because it's discontinuous data. That's why he chose to use a bar graph. It's also interesting to note, by the way, that he used color as an indicator of ripeness, because how could he measure ripeness itself? I don't know if such an instrument exists that you can somehow put it on the lemon and it can tell you how ripe it is. So he assumed that the color of the lemon is linked to its ripeness. So he categorized lemons according to their color. So he said, those are green, therefore they are unripe. And then these are yellow green, so we'll call them nearly ripe. Those are yellow, we'll say they ripe. And those ones are turning a bit black, so we call them overripe. By the way, I do hope that you are realizing that in each of these things I'm saying, there is a bit of a danger, and we call that experimental error or limitations, but we will speak about such things in another movie. Right, so then he measured the voltage across each of these lemons. And we can just see at a glance that what this is saying is the voltage rises as the lemons ripen up to a point and then drops. So we might conclude from that that there gets more and more vitamin C inside the lemon up till it's ripe. And then as it starts getting overripe, then the vitamin C concentration decreases. So it's best to eat lemons when they're ripe.